Thanks for coming. Uh, thanks for staying for this talk. Um, really appreciate it. Excuse me for the technical difficulties. And thank you for uh, Ilya and Roman for like sorting that out. Uh, real heroes. Um, so I'm here to, today to talk to you about uh, visual testing component libraries. And we're going to talk about why visual testing uh, helps you ship better looking products and what tools are needed and how, to f how it fits into your development process. So a little bit about me. Uh, I'm a product designer uh, and founder at Chroma. And uh, we build a tool that helps developers uh, UI, prevent UI bugs in React. Uh, previously, I worked in Meteor and SF, and I helped launch uh, the Apollo for GraphQL project. Um, but after a decade of <coughs> designing and building apps, I, I always like, hit the same problem. And that problem is best summed up in one question. Uh, does this look right? And you've probably either said it to other people or had it uh, if, if, you were, if you're a developer, or if you're a designer, you'd have been like, nah, that doesn't really look right. Um, and the problem is, User interface testing has always been tricky. Um, the details of UI design are subjective. Um, does that shadow work? And pretty nuanced. Um, that button is like one pixel off, or uh, the design just looks a little bit off. So it's still easiest uh, to verify a design's appearance by eyeballing it. Just manually. Uh, but the apps today are complex. They're multi-state. And they're more personalized than, than ever before. Um, this, in turn, you, uh, yields thousands of possible permutations that your user might experience. And it's con really conceivable, especially if you're building an app at the scale of uh, Facebook, or even Airbnb, or any, and on down the, the, the line. Uh, components help us deal with this complexity. Um, nowadays, we're not only seeing a proliferation of components, but uh, each component has an increased amount of complexity. Um, this kind of makes the old eyeball test uh, pretty impractical. Um, in reality, uh, most teams can't really afford to uh, full UI test coverage of their, their app. And so they endure the inevitable regressions that happen when you don't have tests. And if you build software for a living, like me, uh, you spend countless hours fixing UI bugs. And these hours are pretty much wasted time. Uh, sometimes they're obvious, these bugs. Uh, rogue CSS is pretty notorious for ruining layouts. Uh, sometimes they're not. A border radius change here, a uh, uh, color change there. They're kind of imperceptible, but they actually build up over time. And most often, what seem like minor tweaks uh, result in pretty major bugs. And these are bugs that you're going to have to fix. Uh, unfortunately, you can't pass that on to someone else. And what's more, with teams moving toward continuous integration and heavier front ends, uh, pinpointing UI regressions is harder than ever before. So you might look to automate it. Uh, you probably already automate uh, testing in some way with uh, unit tests or end-to-end -end tests or just snapshot tests. Um, so why can't you apply those same ideas uh, to UI, too? Well, it's, it's a bit harder than it seems. Just to give you a lay of the land, unit tests uh, test of functional, the functional properties of a piece of code. Uh, does it output the thing that you expect it to? And what you do is you specify an input, run it through a module, and measure the output. They're useful if you want to verify something concrete. Uh, 2 times 2 equals 4, 1 plus 1 equals 2. 
the problem with unit tests is that the output of a function doesn't really capture what the component looks like. Snapshot tests, uh, just if you've used them, um, they complement unit tests. And the main difference is that they also capture the generated markup, um, the HTML in this case, or what have you. Uh, and that way you can identify if any markup has changed in your component. But don't, they don't grab the styling, and they don't grab the assets, uh, or have any real idea of what the UI looks like uh, to the user. Screenshot tests uh, involve taking a screenshot of the UI and comparing them pixel by pixel to figure out if things have changed. They're useful for quickly comparing two screens based on a given route, but they often result in a lot of false positives um, and tend not to be granular enough uh, to track down UI regressions. End-to-end -end tests, they simulate a user walking through a flow in your app. They're great for telling you if a flow works, but not if a button color is changed or an image is visible. And these things really affect uh, the experience of the user using your, your site or app. And the existing test automated testing solutions just aren't suited for testing modern app UIs. Um, UIs rely on a rendering engine to draw what the user sees. And most automated uh, solutions are intended for code, not the UI, not the rendered UI. And so you kind of think about them as like sledgehammers when what you need is a scalpel. Text is a poor proxy for visual appearance. It always has been. Uh, verifying the appearance of UI should test the rendered UI, uh, what the user actually sees. It's pretty straightforward. So let's look at a different approach that achieves uh, the coverage of automation and the accuracy of manual tests. React along with pretty much every other modern view layer, uh, centers on this idea of components. The pattern provides a well-scoped uh, well and modular way of building and testing user interfaces um, and apps. We're talking about UI here, though. Uh, by testing UI components, the essential building blocks of user interfaces, uh, we, get a great, we get great coverage and more accurate tests. Visual testing uh, involves defining the states of a component, then verifying that it renders as expected during testing. It focuses the manual testers, us humans, uh, on the exact states of the components um, that require attention and that you explicitly support. So let's take a deeper look um, at a date picker component, for example. The idea is that visual testing makes you codify component states in one place, so you can verify them during testing. Here we've seen the discrete states for last hour, uh, last day, and last week. And what this means is that you can very quickly and easily run through a manual visual test of the component's important states uh, and see how it looks to decide if it's rendering properly. In practice, this typically ends up being much easier than sifting through false positives uh, of automated tests, updating uh, the code to match tiny UI changes, and working overtime to make sure those tests pass again. Does that sound familiar? It's also much easier than hunting down UI regressions after the fact. So what do you actually need to get visual testing set up? The, cool, the core tool that you need is a component explorer. Uh, raise your hand if you've heard of a Storybook. So that's, that's a lot of people in, in this room. And if you haven't heard, 
let me be the first to tell you about it. Uh, for, those who don't, of you, uh, for those of you who don't know what Storybook is, it allows you to work on components in isolation of the app. So in doing that, uh, your state and your context and your props aren't polluted by what the app wants. And this class of tool uh, is called the Component Explorer. A visual testing relies on a component explorer to simulate component states during build out and play them back again during testing. Component explorers live alongside your app in development mode, and you can think of them as a development environment for, uh, to build and test UI components. Writing visual tests is as simple as getting your component to render in a certain state in the Component Explorer. You pass props, just like you would uh, if you were building it in your app, and then you see it in isolation uh, on screen. This allows you to confirm that it looks OK. And what's cool is that a lot of folks are coalescing on this idea. There are plenty of open source options. Um, the most popular option is Storybook, uh, which my team helps sponsor and maintain. Uh, with all the activity in this space, though, uh, it, it's great to see that, that we're pushing and we're uh, able to push uh, isolated component development forward. And you're not alone. Component explorers are used by uh, all shapes and sizes of companies. Uh, and it doesn't matter if you're one developer or hundreds, they're surprisingly simple and super low maintenance. So let's demo creating a visual test with a component explorer. Again, a visual test is simply defining component states and rendering them in a component explorer. This allows you to confirm the exact states of your, compo of your component what, it, what it's expected to support, uh, and test it later. In this demo, uh, not going to do live coding because uh, I'm known, to for <laughs> known for typos. Um, so I'll just run through some pseudocode. At the very end, you can uh, there'll be a link to the full working versions. So say we have a comment list in our chat app. There are a couple different states that we need it to support. Uh, has data, paginated, loading, empty, so on and so forth. Since this is a demo, let's start from the very top and uh, make an entirely new component. To add visual testing, we're going to need a component explorer. So what we have is getting create React app, getting a component explorer. Um, we'll use Storybook in this demo, but in practice, anyone will do. Next we're going to build the simplest possible component list implementation, just so we can ensure that the tests are set up right. So here we have a loading state, an empty state, and a has data state. In a separate file, uh, we'll add our tests. We've added a few states uh, we want to look at. So as you can see, we define uh, the state names right where that arrow is. And then you pass the props uh, that the component needs to render in those states. We've also mocked out a few comment, test comments um, just to fill it out. So now let's go to Storybook and confirm that the tests are showing up. Uh, yep, there they are. So this is a wall of code, um, but bear with me. On the left-hand side, uh, we're just, the, the idea here is that we're trying to flesh out uh, the implementation of one of these cases, or one of these states. And in this case, we're going to do it with the has data, so when, when all the comments are there. Um, on the left column, we're using uh, styled components, which is a, which is a CSS and JS library. Um, it allows, uh, I'm not going to pitch styled components, but any CSS um, thing will do. Uh, and on the right, we've fleshed out the basic uh, component from earlier. As you can see, we have an avatar, we have, um, 
text, we have the message, essentially. So once we have that, we can check Storybook again to see uh, the, com the comment list in that exact state um, that we just mocked up. So here we have has data rendering just fine. And if we toggle through the other states, we can then quickly check uh, their appearance to prevent any regressions. So if we're, happy, we're unhappy with our has data implementation, we could go back and keep working on it. Or if we're just, satis just satisfied with it, we'll just make the, the next state. Um, so paginated or empty or what have you. Um, and if you do this a few times, you all of a sudden have a suite of tests for each component. So this pretty much encapsulates visual testing. It's that the visual, uh, the human tester is focused on the exact states uh, and the exact components that matter. It's not scattershot like automated tests. Um, it's accurate because you're using a human, a human to QA uh, whether a component looks right. But it's not as taxing because you're not queuing every single uh, possible thing that your component could, could render. Uh, you're just queuing the exact states that your component supports. And the coverage is better because you finally explicitly sta uh, specified those states. And best of all, these are all recorded pretty much forevermore in your component explorer. So you can always revisit them um, and continue to check that they look right as your uh, app evolves. And if there's one thing uh, you take away today, uh, just visual test your components. It's not that it saves just you time, which totally does. Um, it's that it saves your designer's time. It saves your PM's time. Um, and your QA people as well. But there's one more challenge. App UIs have to be reliable over time. Since apps are constantly changing, UI bugs tend to slip in. It's an endemic part of app development. The challenge is to find them, and fix them before they hit production. So how do you achieve the coverage and the accuracy and, and reliability to ensure that your UI components continue to look great as your app evolves? Visual snapshot testing can help you. As mentioned earlier, screenshot tests involve taking pictures of the rendered UI and comparing them pixel by pixel to catch changes. They're not new. You've probably heard about them before. They're just prone to false positives when testing at the screen level. And that's why you don't see them implemented very, very much. But if you direct them at components, that have visual tests, this allows you to mitigate all of those false positives. It allows you to narrow in on the real changes in your UI in the same way that unit tests of modules help you locate implementation bugs quicker. So let's go through it. Visual tests give you a way to define and verify states using a component explorer. So when a UI component is updated, it's easy to confirm how those changes affect each state. Screenshot tests are great at telling you when changes occur. When you combine screenshot and visual tests, you're, in, you're able to pinpoint regressions across your entire component library, down to the exact component and exact state. So no more hunting around for things that look different. And by identifying only what has changed across your component library and allowing devs to quickly visually check out whether those changes are intentional, teams get wide coverage, accuracy, and reliability. So here's what it looks like in your development process. First, you update a UI component. Next, you take snapshots and compare the new version to the old version. Finally, you visually test 
whether the changes, if there are changes, caused by the update were intentional. If they were intentional, everything's good. You merge and you send it off into the cloud. So building visual snapshot testing. Turns out there are a lot of tools in this space and all you need to do is pretty much put them together. Um, you can use one of the component explorers I mentioned earlier. And then you can add a visual uh, screenshot library like Backstop or Puppeteer or WebDriver um, or Visual View to take screenshots on your local development machine. I think a lot of these screenshot tools are mostly focused on the individual developer experience. So once you combine the two, you have visual snapshot tests. And you have the, a formula to prevent UI regressions once and for all. So uh, visual testing gives you confidence in shipping UI. If you want to learn more about what I talked uh, about the talk that I gave today, uh, I co-authored co -authored a free handbook um, to walk you through the, the process of visual testing your React app uh, from first principles, pretty much. Uh, it has the working code samples that I showed earlier, and there will be a link to download it at the end. Um, so again, at the end at the, of the slide as well. And if you don't want to cobble together a visual, test, a visual snapshot testing tool, uh, my team is building Chromatic, uh, a lightning fast cloud-based testing tool for React. So it hooks into your CI, tests every single component on every commit, um, so you'll pretty much never have to hunt down a UI bug again. And you can get chromatic um, testing in your component library in like 60 seconds. Uh, usage is free and unlimited uh, during early access. Um, and if your company has a component library or uses Storybook or wants to do both, uh, you can talk to me after this or send me an email, um, dom at highchroma.com, D-O-M. Um, again, here are the links to the free handbook and my email and my Twitter. Thank you so much for your time today. Animations, making sure they're working well. Yeah, uh, that generally involves like taking a recording, mm -hmm. and right now I'm not aware that any of like the existing solutions actually like support that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's an edge case. I was just curious if you guys explored that at all. Right. Right. And what about viewport testing? Viewport testing. Yeah. So you can. Uh, a lot of this, uh, a lot of the solutions, and including ours, uh, allow you to viewport test. You just uh, assign a, a viewport width, and then we'll take and do the right thing. Yeah. But. Okay. Awesome. Thanks so much. Cool.